From Wyoming Public Media, this is Human Nature, real stories where humans and our habitat meet. This time, we'll hear about a man who decided that the suffering of animals was his problem too. Patrick Kilonzo Malua is a conservationist and farmer in Kenya. I live in a, in a small village called Kajire. It's one of the villages that borders Tavo National Park. The park and the neighboring wildlife refuge are major tourist destinations. People visit from all over the world to spot elephants, water buffalo, antelope, monkeys, and lions. For Patrick, seeing those animals was a part of ordinary life. They'd stroll into his village or even onto his family's farm. But that didn't mean the animals were exactly welcome. People did not have good relationship with animals because they used to include me to a farm. There was a very big drought and everything that we had planted got dry. Animals were coming to, to the villages looking for water. So the little also I had in my farm, it got eaten up completely. That was in 2009. Because of the drought, animals were wandering in search of water and food. And in the park, it was even worse. Before my eyes, we lost a lot of animals. Uh, elephants, buffaloes, monkeys, baboons, antelope, zebras. Almost all manners of animals because if there's no water, there's no life, you know. I mean, the odor of um, bad smell was everywhere because the animals were dying, really dying. No one, not even the government, was taking action to help the animals. Patrick wondered what he could do. I felt bad, but, you know, I did not have any strength and power to, to do anything. A couple of years ago, another drought set in. One day, Patrick came across a buffalo sniffing an empty water hole and decided that this time he couldn't ignore what was happening to the animals. I could see the need of animals having water. Babies were coming there, baby elephants, baby buffaloes. And every animal was, you know, grumbling for water. I was really moved even into tears because that was unbelievable that there's drought and everyone is sitting down, they're doing nothing. Patrick got a truck that could carry 10,000 liters of water and drove it 43 miles to the wildlife sanctuary. He started with one truckload a day. But it wasn't enough. He'd get to the water hole and find hundreds of animals waiting for water. So he started making two, three, four trips a day. Because I saw, I saw uh, like seven, eight years ago, I saw animals dying. So I wanted to look for an alternative. His job was sometimes nerve wracking. The animals learned to recognize his truck and they'd run right up to it. It could take an entire minute just to get the water going. But the animals always waited, and that was proof to Patrick that he was doing the right thing. And they trusted me, and I trusted them as well. I know that there's a, a very strong bonding for people and animals. Like, like for example, uh, I mean, they're not fighting when they're drinking water, and, uh, you know, different species of animals, and they're just there. <laughs> And they love each other, and, uh, you know, they're not fighting, you know, they're brushing shoulders every time. So, uh, I mean, for me, uh, I mean, people could learn a lot of love from animals. They could learn a lot of lessons of love, yeah. Patrick was often hauling water for 12 hours a day. He put everything aside to help the animals survive until it rained. At first, people in his village didn't get it. People are like, how can you take water to, to the animals and people don't have water to drink? But I tell them animals, they don't have anybody to help and people can help each other. Yeah, you know, people are starting to think twice. And it's like, oh, I think the animals have the right. They also have the right to have water. So most of the perception has now really changed, especially the kids in my village and some of the uh, you know adults have really changed a lot. We had contributed in the downfall of uh, not having rain. Um, I mean, the climate change has been caused by people, 
people have done all manners of environmental hazards and the animals are just innocent. Even the rain patterns have been tampered because of human beings. So I thought it's a very big shame for animals that are innocent. They suffer because of us. So I, I realized that I had a lot of responsibility. We had caused a lot of damage and so we are responsible for not having water on this planet Earth. It's been over a year since Patrick first decided to take responsibility. Since then, he's found some additional strategies to get water to wildlife in Savo National Park, like installing tanks with solar-powered pumps that draw water from underground. You can find updates on his GoFundMe page, where he's raising money to help animals through this and future droughts. Patrick plans to continue this work. Uh, I think as long as I'm alive. Yeah, 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 as long as I'm alive.